All right, today's lesson is really just a continuation of the last one. In fact, it's it's still lesson 11, 3.11. Um, so it's going to look very similar, but we're going to go a little further because the last lesson said to find all the rational zeros. And the new lesson is just saying, you know, bring it on, let's find them all. So it's, today's lesson is find all the zeros of any kind of create. We're pretty much, this is what it was all about. I give you any polynomial, third power, fourth, fifth, whatever, and using all the different skills we have, synthetic division, factoring, set, you know, quadratic formula, etc., etc., to figure out, in this case, for the first example, we're trying to figure out the three answers. This is a third power, and we just flat out need to find all three of those answers, whether they're rational, which would mean you know, nicer whole numbers and fractions, or possibly imaginary or square root answers. Find them all. And you know, normally a problem like this back from a few days ago, we would it has four terms, one, two, three, four, and we might try to factor by grouping, you know, put these two together and these two together. But if you just look at this even for just a second, you can see that there's no way that if you factor out x squared here, you'd have x plus 6 as your factor in parentheses. And this is certainly not going to match that. That's got a 23 and a 14 in it. So that's not going to work. So we're going to build off of what we did yesterday, which is let's list off all of the possible rational zeros. And then we'll just start checking them. So the possible rational zeros are going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 7, plus or minus 14, over plus or minus 1. That makes it a little simpler. Which really means it's just, I'm going to be a little, well, let's just write it out. Which means it's going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2 plus or minus 7, plus or minus 14. So those are our choices. And since we really don't have anything else to do, at the beginning of this is a guessing game. But once we get it right, once we find one of these things that is a zero, one of these possible rational zeros that actually is a zero, we will have broken this problem down from a third power to squared. Once we get it to a squared power, the guessing is over. We're going to either factor or use quadratic formula at that point. So, here we go. Let's just try stuff. I always start, if one is one of them, I always start with one. And we have 1, 6, negative 23, 14. We got 1, 1, 7, 7, negative 16, negative 16, negative 2, not zero. So negative or one is not a zero. Let's try a negative one. Put that one over here. Same thing. One, six, negative twenty-three, fourteen. One, negative one, five, negative five, negative twenty-eight, twenty-eight, not zero. You might as well just write not zero there, but it is uh forty-two. Okay, so that's no good either. Let's try two. Put a 2 in there, you get 1, 6, negative 23, 14. That's a 6 right there. All right, 1, 2, 8, 16, um, negative 7, negative 14, and did it. There we go. That's that special moment where you know you just found 1 and you don't really need to find any more because What's left here on the bottom is just, remember, this is the remainder, this is the constant, this is x, this is x squared. So we now have just a nice quadratic. So we have x squared plus 8x minus 7. So we have one of our zeros, we found this one, and the other two are going to come from this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set that equal to 0 and solve it. And let's see here. It's kind of a tricky one in a way. This, this will probably fool you a little bit because at first you're going to try to factor it. You look at that and you see, you see 7s and 8s and stuff, but 
it just doesn't work. If you try to put, if you tried to go x plus 7, x minus 1, or whatever, you're just not going to add up to 8 because the signs have to be different. So, it's a quadratic formula. If you can't factor it, you just plug the numbers into the formula. And this does not factor. Negative 8, so x equals negative 8 plus or minus square root 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 7 all over 2 times 1, which equals negative 8 plus or minus square root 64 plus 28 all over 2, which equals negative 8, plus or minus, what do we got there, 92 over 2. And then uh, we're almost done. It's, um, the only issue is we have 92 in there, and that has a pair. So we're going to go off to the side just to show you. I'll take my time here. 92 divide in the 2 you get 46 and there's a 2 and there's a 23 23 is prime so all we have here is a pair of 2's but that's better than nothing so now we have negative 8 plus or minus 2 square root 23 over 2 and whenever we have all three of these numbers in quadratic formula when all three of those are divisible by the same number then we go ahead and reduce all those numbers. It has to be all three. So we're just going to divide all of them by 2. We get negative 4 plus or minus square root 23. So to summarize, if you remember from the other screen, we had an answer of x equals 2. That was already there. There's one answer. And then here's the other two answers right there. It was a third power equation to begin with, and we have one, two, three answers. Let's do it one more time. Um, the problems are all pretty similar, uh, so I'm not going to do a ton of examples on this video, but I'll do one more. Uh, higher power, instead of third power, I cranked it up to fourth power. Looks a little chaotic. We really have no way to start this problem except list off all the rational zeros and start trying them. So this will give you some practice again on listing them off. The nice thing here is this is a one. So all the rational zeros are just going to be all the factors of this, the 45, divide, this is all the possible ones. It's all the factors of this one, really just divided by one. So we're, I'm just going to list them straight up with uh, just the 45. So the possible rational zeros are plus or minus 1. I just kind of go through, I'm just kind of going through the numbers and checking in my mind if those, the number I think of goes into 45 evenly. So 2 doesn't, but 3 does. So it's plus or minus 3, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 9, plus or minus 15, and of course plus or minus 45. Those are our choices. So, once again, why not just start simple and see what happens. Let's put a 1 in there and see. So I'm put a 1. Synthetic division, we get 1, 4, negative 14, negative 36, 45. Drop down the 1, 1, 5, 5, negative 9, negative 9, negative 45, negative 45, and zero. Hey, we got lucky right off the bat. Now here's a really important part. You don't, we're down to this now. We should just immediately write this down and focus on that. We never want to really go back to the original problem. We want, we're, we're trying to keep breaking this down. We went from a fourth power, got lucky, tried one, got a zero right off the bat. So this is one of the answers to this problem because that's a zero. And now we have this new problem. Never look back at the old problem anymore. The whole idea is to keep shrinking these powers. 
So now we're down to, we have, we have our answer, which is right here, 1. This is a, x equals 1 is going to be one of our answers. And then we're going to write down x to the third plus 5x squared minus 9x minus 45. And now we want to solve that equation. So we'll set that equal to 0. Now, there's a couple ways to handle this. If you happen to notice, and it's going to happen on some of these problems, if you happen to notice that this third power now, right here, this thing, it does factor by grouping. You know, I can kind of see that if I, f if I take these two terms, factor out x squared, take these two, factor out the negative 9, I will have x plus 5 inside of both those parentheses. Then you really, if you see that, then you don't really have to keep trying synthetic division. But you could. If you don't see it, you could try some other numbers. You could try the, the negative 1, you could try positive 3, negative 3, and you know, the, if they're zeros, then this will this will end, this remainder will end with zero with this function. But it, man, it's hard to do that when you can see what's going on here. So I, I think you'll see this enough to where it's worth just doing it this way this time. I'm going to factor by grouping, which means I'm kind of done with this lesson. I mean, there's this is all old now. Yeah, this is things we've been doing for the last week or two. But it's always good to get a reminder of this too. So I'm going to look at these first two terms and then the second two terms and factor for each one. So this is a x squared parentheses x plus 5. And then here it's going to be minus 9 parentheses x plus 5 equals 0. And you can see right here, I'll just show you again, probably for the 172nd time here, that this distributes to here to make that. And then this distributes to here to make that. So not only is this right, in other words, this does equal this, it also had to match this. These x plus 5s had to be the same. And everything, if you look at that problem, it's perfect the way it's set up. Now, the x plus 5 is the common thing between the two, two, func the two uh, pieces of the polynomial. And we're left with x squared minus 9. That's right here, x squared minus 9. I pulled out the x plus 5 that was common, put that to the front as a GCF, and I'm left with x squared minus 9 over here. And we're just about done with this problem. So it equals 0, so we have x plus 5 equals 0, and x squared minus 9 equals 0. This is an easy answer right here, negative 5. There's our second answer. Remember we had 1 as our first answer over here. Now we have negative 5, and our last two answers are coming from this. And there's not a whole lot to do here except x squared equals 9, and then square root both sides, and you get plus or minus 3. And we got this answer over here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 answers and it's a fourth power polynomial. Like I said, not anything really too new here, only the fact that we have to finish the problem. We can't just list the rational zeros and find those. We have to keep going until we basically have found all answers, which in a way is a little more straightforward. Um, you know what you have to do here. You have to find the answers to these problems. All right, that should be enough to get you going. The homework is only uh, 10 problems, although, you know, they're a little longer than normal. That's why there's less of them. So uh, good luck with it. Hope this helps. Work hard. Be nice. See you soon.